Deathly Records started earlier this year. We kind of wanted to offer something different. We didn't want to just be a record label. We wanted to offer like a bespoke support for a band um, to get them to the next stage or just even just get them onto the first stage. So debut singles, things like that, just short term kind of help and support for a band to move on in their careers. Uh, the best thing about running your own record label is just the kind of little victories are, are yours. You can really appreciate them. I think when you work in on like a big project or a big team with other people, you kind of, it can get diluted a bit and you kind of forget why you're doing it sometimes. Um, but when it's your run record label, when you get little victories and little wins, they really mean so much to you. And just seeing the bands develop and how happy they are with how things are going, it's just really like personal satisfaction as well. And then you start to see kind of Deathly Records on like iTunes and Spotify and start seeing it in articles and press publications and it just kind of makes it all really real and then you kind of just get a sense of achievement you're actually doing it, you didn't just say you were going to do it, you started to actually do it and it's probably just getting the love out of it, and it just keeping it fun is the best thing about it. Um, when we started researching uh, setting up a record label and how we were going to go about it, um, it kind of just started with a list of things we'd have to do. So going online and looking at all the kind of licenses you needed and just looking, okay if we were going to do this what's the setup, what's the project plan, um, the timeline, and the list just got longer and longer and longer. And a lot of it we thought we could probably do, um, and it isn't impossible to do, but it would just take a long time and a lot of resource. And then when we came across the record label in a box, it just started making sense. Um, just It just took things off the list that we'd have to do. Um, and I think the biggest one for us was the contracts. I think the thing we worried about most was if we're gonna start approaching artists, we know, we know nothing about contracts. Where do we go? Do we have to go to a lawyer to get them drawn up? Do we have to go back every time? And how are we going to manage this? Because the legal ground, we just didn't know anything about, really. So the big selling point of the record label in a box was the fact you get your contracts um, and you know they're to a good industry standard. So it just meant we didn't have to worry about that. And that was probably like, the biggest selling point for us. And with Lillian, um, it was just a dream come true, really, for me. Because I'd seen them um, I've seen them support science and then seen them support or uh, well, play Threshold Festival as well um, and just love them and every time I've seen them I love them and I was turning to other people in the crowd and they love them live and I'm just a massive fan of them and then when we set the label up pretty much the same day or the same week Lilium Online released this kind of teaser for their first single just like a 30 second video and inside I was just gutted because I thought that meant someone had signed them um, so I just emailed them and said you know really great you're getting a single out can't wait to see it um, can't wait to see the video can't wait to hear the single but, you know, who have you signed with? And they came back and said, oh, we haven't actually signed with anyone, we're just going to start, you know, go ahead and release a single. And my, I just like, lit up, so I just said, you know, like, we need to meet, like, tonight, tomorrow, um, and just get it sorted. And we just kind of met for a couple of weeks, talked about what they wanted to do, what we could do for them. Um, and yeah, it was just like the crowning achievement. I think when we started, if I had had one band in Liverpool that I wanted to sign, it was Liam. So I was just, yeah, super chuffed that we got, got to work with them. As a record label, um, we didn't really ever think about doing events, but we knew that people had waited for Lilium's first single for a while now. The anticipation was really high, and we knew that we wanted to throw like a party. Um, not just because it's a great single, but almost because of the hard work that went into it. We kind of wanted a night where we could really enjoy it and have a party. Um, so we just talked about what we wanted that to represent and what we wanted to be, and started putting kind of the work in motion. Um, so just finding a venue that we thought was the right size and. Um, had the right vibe and then just talk about the feel of the event, what other bands we wanted to play on the night and then you kind of think, you forget about all the specifics like you've got to get a sound guy and a light guy and um, think about ticket prices and if you're gonna, we end up having it th free and I kind of wish that we had had tickets because then I would have known how many people were going to turn up because the biggest worry was not knowing how many people were going to turn up and they end up going really great and um, we're so happy to get the single out there and that people turn up and have a good time. Hi, we're Lillian and this is our single Disappear.
tried reasoning with us, it makes no sense. And I rip it apart, you tear it me down to the start. Oh, when you leave me, oh, break down on me, break down. started working with was Owls. Um, they're still only just under a year old now. Um, and when we launched the label, we kind of just put it out there that we were looking for demos, looking for artists to work with. And Owls actually got in touch with us. Um, I'd seen them at their, their launch at the Scandinavian church and seen them at Threshold Festival as well. Um, loved their vibe, loved their image, their kind of creativity. And they came to us because they were looking to release their third single and they wanted to do it in a very creative way. Um, they'd done one on tape, one on vinyl. And they had no idea what they wanted to do for the third one, other than they didn't want it to be a CD, basically. Um, so that was it was a great introduction because we just got to sit down and have like this really creative brainstorm about how we were going to do it. And to be honest, we didn't expect anyone to come to us. We kind of thought we'd have to go out there and sell ourselves. So to have someone come to us really enthusiastic um, and just have a really creative process, it didn't really feel like a record label because we were just thinking about this product we were going to release. Um, that was really just really unexpected kind of first introduction. Someday we'll sell 
Uh, working with Ditto has just been great from day one. Um, the support's been awesome, um, especially with the releases and the kind of package that comes with them because the Spotify playlists have been really great to get the artists uh, represented on those. And just being associated with Ditto just helps because of the roster of artists they work with. It, it just kind of elevates things a little bit more. People kind of, when they have that name attached to you, they have more knowledge of what you're working with and who you are. You kind of, you're representing a certain standard of kind of music industry experience. Just, just helped to have a name kind of related to you. And yeah, having the support upon the releases and just even things like, you know, when we released Lilium's single, there's about three other artists called Lilium. So it was about the platforms aligning us with the right things and just getting advice about how we go about making sure things are identified correctly. Um, and it's just it's just been great because it's really responsive. Um, you never have to wait long to hear back. So it's been a really positive experience. Thinking about what we want to do next and where we want to go, um, it's kind of almost take a little pause and take heed of what we've done so far and kind of just learn some lessons, what to do, what not to do. And we just want to look at the timeline. So we want to sit down with Owls and Lilium, um, think about their next releases, when they're going to come out, what they want to do next, and kind of look at where that leaves us, what timeline it leaves us with. Um, so hopefully we'll have a gap to take on another artist or two. We've got our eye on a couple we'd really like to work with in Liverpool. So we don't want to overcommit ourselves. So it's just about seeing where we are, seeing what 2017 kind of pans out like in the diary and then hopefully contacting some more people. We'd like to do it for you kind of really quick, really small releases if bands are interested. So bands that have got either their kind of debut single or their first kind of proper single that isn't a demo or isn't on just Bandcamp or SoundCloud and they actually want to do a proper full platform release. We'd like to kind of just do a few quick sharp ones of those just to help bands get them out there. Um, but with regards to kind of building up the roster, I think we're just going to see, see who we can get on board with the resource we've got next year.